Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and sorry for the late recording, but um, you didn't want to hear from me yesterday. I had 102 fever, and I was completely out of commission. Um, but we still have about five full hours to lock, so hopefully you'll get this in time. And uh, uh, we'll be able to make some heads or tails of this very, very interesting card. Interesting because there's no shortage of extremely strong inside the distance props. Um, and it's really going to come a question of which one you pick, um, because you can make a case for a lot of real smash spots here based on the odds, the inside the distance line and things like that. And to kind of separate them, it's kind of asking for trouble. So what my recommendation is, is probably to just let ownership kind of drive your decision-making as far as the kind of smash spots. And we'll get to them, but I want to start with the uh, with the equity play here. Um, and again, you know, just to recap for those that are not that are that are here from the first time, for especially DK scoring, you, you want to have you, you want to look for a combination of things, um, or at least one of them. You want first, you want well, real good win equity. In other words, sometimes there's this kind of mispricing based on the win odds. Um, it doesn't happen too often. It usually does when there's a replacement fighter, but sometimes the line moves in such a way that, um, the, you know, the drafting prices came out like three days beforehand. And so you, you'll get some good win equity plays. The other thing, obviously, you're looking for is possibly uh, fighters that can finish inside the distance. I refer to that the inside the distance line. And then also, um, in a more subtle way, uh, those fighters that have good grappling upside uh, because control time and takedowns are really important to DraftKings scoring. And if you can't get any of those things, you could still get wins based on a lot of volume, but it's just harder kind of to do it that way. So, hey, if you want a perfect scenario, you'll want to have uh, uh, good inside the distance line, grappling upside, and a and a uh, misprice that doesn't happen all too often. It did happen like several, a few weeks ago. Um, that's when I actually chopped the, uh, chopped that big lottery with the, the five round fight. That was a misprice. And the guy grappling upside, the guy scored like 150 points. That was crazy. Anyway. Um, the first one I want to talk about is actually the kind of the equity play here. And that would be uh, Lando Venata. As you'll see from the, the odds here um, it's basically a pick them. Yet he's being priced on DraftKings at about 7,700. So that is in and of itself kind of a theoretical lock. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean it's an actual lock. It's just kind of a theoretical lock um, that he's being priced by DraftKings to probably own, only win the fight about 40% of the time. Yet he actually is going to win the fight about, as the line suggests, about 50% of the time. Um, that doesn't mean you have to play him, but that is certainly something to, to, <laughs> that, that makes him a really good play. Um, the other thing is that Venata also does have some wrestling and grappling upside. He does not use it all too often though. Um, I didn't say, I don't mean to say he doesn't use it all too often. It doesn't, doesn't use it all the time. So don't play him and then get all mad if he doesn't go for the wrestling or the grappling. Cause I've seen fights where he does go for that. I've seen fights where he doesn't. And, uh, yeah. So right off the bat, if you really want to be, be sneaky, the first thing you probably want to consider doing is, is probably playing Charles Jourdain. Um, just because the ownership of Venata, I imagine, is going to be extremely high. Just because there's very few really good um, long shots to uh, or underdogs to make your lineups with. So I think people are going to go here to an extreme degree. And, you know, while it is a kind of a theoretical lock, the reality is, is that, is that half the time it's going to bust, right? He's 50%, well, 50% of the time he's going to lose. And you think about this, you're going to get the much lower owned Charles Jourdain at 50, you know, who's going to win about 50% of the time. Um, now, in, granted, it is a kind of a, uh, whatchamacallit, um, kind of a fishy inside the distance prop, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's like pick them. And if you get, Jordan finishing this guy, which happens about 50% of the time. So I guess for him, it'd be about 25% of the time. I mean, you're going to get him at probably low ownership and you're going 
you know, you knock out a lot of that Venata chalk. Um, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's kind of worth doing. It's my opinion, at least, at least, especially. In, well, that's almost exclusive for GPPs and cash. You don't want to do that, but in GPPs, I think that's a pretty strong play actually. So let's just kind of get into some of these. And, and these fights can be broken down pretty easily between fights that just are just want no part of and fights with just extremely high ceilings. Um, and let's start with this Mike Jackson versus uh, Dean Barry. Um, okay, so Dean Barry is about a 10 to 1 favorite. And there's inside the distance prop. It's about pick them to finish inside the first round and a half. So they can't price him at like 11,000. So they price him at 95, 9,600, whatever. And he's certainly it's hard to deny. The odds are such that it's probably going to pay off the price. Right. Um, so you got to put him in that kind of pool of, of, of high ceiling plays. Um, you can make a case for, well, pretty much all of these guys that, you know, they don't have to get there. But the odds are that they will. So I'm going to put all these guys kind of in the same pool and then probably let ownership kind of dictate this at the end. All right, next one is going to be Linz Prachniao. This one is also a pretty decent inside the distance prop. And the good thing about this one is that it's basically a pick and fight and the DraftKings pricing price, uh, price it that way. So I think this is a very, I think this is a key fight. I think you want to play this fight if you can um you can get them either of them in really easily and you have that finishing upside so i think this is kind of a key fight uh elder parsons um it looks ex almost exactly the same as the pratchnell lins fight right it's about to pick them you have the same like minus 220 inside the distance prop pricing is good so this is another good fight that you want to get in there all right, uh, Iori Lang, or however you want to pronounce this guy's name, against Cameron Else. This now, so this one, he's a 9,200 fighter, but his inside the distance prop is only minus 185. So it's a little worse than some of these others. Um, and I just worry that that people will go, that he just doesn't have the same type of upside as these other 94, 93, 9,400 guys. So I think that he's my least favorite of all of these 9,200 guys. Um, certainly no denying inside the distance prop is pretty, pretty good, but it's not amazing like some of these others that we'll get to. And so I kind of give him kind of a weaker chance to, to get there than the other ones. To it, uh, Tyson Pedro, it's a, a minus 700, it's minus 180 to finish inside a round and a half. I mean, and he's the same price pretty much as the as at Corey Lang. So, so for me, it's not even close. Like Pedro would be almost up on the same scales as Mike Jackson. Um, so I feel as though these are at least the first two just big time, big time A side fighters that you want. Um, I would not go with a four to one favorite on the other side of this, um, four to one underdog on the other side of this. Um, so he's not one of the underdogs I'm probably looking at. We looked at a uh, Lang versus else. All right. So Dwight Grant against Sergey. This is one of those that is just going to be avoided. The inside the distance prop is, is, is about a pick them. And you compare that to these other pick em fights with the inside the distance prop of 200, it's just not as strong of a play either side of this fight. So that one's going to be a fade. So this next one is Mark Andre Burial against Jordan Wright. And this one is really strong because it's got, it looks like that same inside the distance prop, that minus 200, that these other kind of like pick em fights have Parsons, Elder, Pratchnell, Linz. But what's neat about this one is that you really can play both sides, even though it's a minus 195, because Jordan's rights win condition is almost exclusively getting a knockout in the first round. So he is one of the underdogs that is certainly live. I worry that he's that the it's too live 
meaning that he's going to be really popular. But there's just no denying the upside at only a plus 165 dog. Um, I think it's really, I, I think you really want to play both sides of this. We talked about Venata Jordan. I think I've really decided from talking this out that I'm probably going to end up playing zero Venata um, in GPPs. I think that's the what I'm just going to have to do here. Um, he's just going to be too popular, I think. Um, and if you look at the inside the distance prop, again, it's really not that great. Um, it's barely a pick em. So I would rather play someone like any of these other pick -ems, like the Prochnow, Linz, Elder, Parsons, you know, even though there's that win equity on the Venata side, I just think that his popularity is just going to be too much for me to take. So I'm probably going to avoid that. Um, Romanoff Sherman. So here's another just ridiculous, he's like 25 to one favorite. And if that's not bad enough, it's got a seven to one inside the distance prop. It's minus 200 to even start round two. Not to mention that he's a grappler and a wrestler. So <laughs> uh, you got him, you got Jackson, and you have Pedro. All three of them, you just, you just can't argue with. Um, and what's cool about it is, is you probably can't play all three of them. So you're going to have to pick your favorites. Uh, Macy Barber against Montana De La Rosa. Um, inside the distance prop, like most women's fights, are very poor probably going to try to avoid this one. Clay Guida versus Claudio Puelas. This is a pick and fight, which is good, but the inside the distance prop, it's much poorer than the ones that we discussed. Um, it's a plus 130 uh, inside the distance prop. So I, I'm not, I don't really want to be part of that. I've heard the case made for Clay Guida being, having a lot of wrestling grappling upside. Uh, I guess if you want to sprinkle some Guida, that's fine, but I'm probably not going to play much of this fight at all and then you get to the real pain in the neck because both of these sides are really strong you know this is the main event five round fight so five rounds you really you know you really want to want to play this because you have all those rounds to work with not to mention that jessica andras has a lot of volume a lot of wrestling just a lot of good things that lead to good fantasy scores okay However, in, in a card starved for value, it's, you just can't deny the Limo side of it. She's only a 195 underdog. She's being priced very, very favorably at, what, 7,600, something like that, or maybe not even, like 7,300. And not only that, but she does have some first-round KO upside. Um, so while I'm definitely going to be interested in the, in, in the Andras side, this is another one where I have no problem taking the underdog. Uh, that would be Lemos. So um, I guess to summarize here, I guess the thing you have to prioritize is which underdogs you want, right? I mean, look, if, if you want to play Venata, I just think you're, you're in dupe city. I really do. Um, you have to, because everybody's going to do that. They're going to play Venata. And then they're going to trust pick those, those, those big favorites, maybe play one of those 82s and be done with it where I just don't want to play that way. I'd much rather play the upside Jordan, Wright. I much rather play Lemos, even though she's probably going to lose. Right. Um, and stick to those 8,100 fights, then go and play Venata. So he's going to be the death of me. He's going to be one that scores 110 and breaks the slate, but I just don't want to play a slate in a way that even if things go perfectly for me, I will end up chopping it. So that'll be the end. Um, good luck, everybody. Sorry for the late, uh, late recording. I hope I was able to grasp everything that you needed and uh, good luck.